Hi, and welcome back to In the Word TV. I'm Shayla Crow coming to you from Houston, Texas. And I just want to say thank you, as I do every time I come on the session. Just want to say thank you for um, tuning in, for finding us. No matter how you found us, no matter what you feel like right now, I just believe that it was the Holy Spirit that drew you here and that God has a specific, strategic word for you to encourage you today, um, no matter where you are. Um, God is a good God and he's a loving God and he has a plan and a purpose for your life. You're called, you've got a destiny. He formed you, he knew you even before he formed you in your mother's womb. And so I just want to encourage you wherever you are just to have ears to hear and eyes to see what the spirit of God is saying today. And uh, many times in our uh, segments, we bring on different people that we feel like um, have value, have impacted our lives, have impacted our city, have impacted their spheres of influence. And so today I am very, very grateful to have my mother-in-law, Miss Debbie Crow, on. Um, I call her my mother-in-love because that's what she is. And really, she's like my mom. And, you know, a lot of times we bring different people in here. And I just felt like in this season, you know, we've been talking about family. And um, this is our second segment together. So if you want to hear her testimony and find out kind of what her life looked like leading up to Jesus, it's just so inspiring because, you know, um, her sister started going to church and then put them on a bus to go to church with them. And I, I was thinking about my life and, you know, there was a, so much of my childhood, even though I don't know if I really ever knew Jesus um, in an intimate way in, the, in my younger years, my grandparents picked me up every weekend, took me to church, brought me home. Mm -hmm. I would go with them to choir on Wednesday nights because they were in the church choir so I could go to Dairy Queen with all the <laughs> um, older people after because they would spoil me with ice cream. But even in those times, there were seeds being planted in my life. And um, I just think God's so amazing because he brings people into our life. Um, a lot of those people that were my grandparents' friends were people that impacted me as a young child that taught me things that I didn't even realize I was being taught, you know, and I'm so grateful for, um, you know, for your sister to bring you to church because here you are today and you've impacted so, so many people, you know, generations of people. And so, um, you know, one of the cool things we've talked about this before is, you know, Debbie's not in a five-fold ministry position, but she has been leading as a wife and a mom and been in and out of positions of ministry. And I think sometimes people will hear things that we say or listen to us and think, well, you know, this is what you do. You can do this. This is who you are. And, um, you know, for however many years, my, my husband's 39 years old. And so <laughs> for a lot of years, she has been equipping the kingdom of God and the generations. Um, there, there are nine children, and I'll let you elaborate on that in a minute. But my husband and I have a 16-year-old, a 12-year-old, and an 8-year-old. And so there's nine children, and then three years later, we had our own child. And people will see my kids oftentimes with their grandparents and think, <laughs> they're their kids too. And so um, I'm saying that just to say what a blessing it is and what an honor it's been just to be in. I can't imagine being in any other family, any other life. I would never ask for it because it's really special. It's something that not everybody has. Um, I was joking a while ago that we could be like our own church. We're all spread out, but you know, people would laugh at us when we'd have friends come to birthday parties because they would be like, y'all are the party. You know, we don't need a family yeah, reunion a with extended family because we're like a family. We're bigger than some family reunions. <laughs> and, and um, you know, with that, there comes a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work, a lot of hard seasons. And um, it's, it's always worth what it costs. It just yeah. always is worth what That's it's cost. And so I just asked her originally to come on and just really talk about that because I feel like, you know, sometimes we get in front of people and we talk about the easy stuff and we talk about um, the amazing things God's done and God is faithful and he has done amazing things. But who we become and how God refines our heart, you know, he doesn't cause these things to happen to us, but he uses every opportunity. Right. And I do think there are times where he allows things um, that, that um, happen in our lives to to give us opportunity to grow and, and to become, you know, the best version of who he created us to be. And we say this so many times that, you know, we can't always help what happens to us, but who we become and how we handle the situations, that's what matters. And there's so many times that I know in my life, people have been either impacted or saved or their lives have been 
truly changed because they've watched from a distance how I've handled situations. And I don't, a lot of times I'll look back at those situations and think to myself, I didn't even understand what I was going through. Even I was struggling with why that was happening to me. But I just always want to say that I will still call you faithful, God, mm -hmm. no matter yes. what this ends up looking like in the end, I'm still going to call him faithful. And um, one of the reasons I can do that, I can sit here today and encourage so many people is because of the women who have poured into my life and, and really reaffirmed that, taught me that, reinstilled that. I've watched them go through things and come out more refined in the fire and gone through things together. And and so I just feel like sometimes we just don't know what to do or how to do it. And I want to encourage you two things today. Number one, that God is a, a faithful God, that he's got a plan for your family, that it's his desire to see restoration, that it's his desire that none shall perish, but that everyone will enter into eternity, that God's heart breaks when our heart breaks, and that we don't go through things alone. But also I want to encourage you that you may never have a, a five-fold ministry. You might never be um, operating in a full time position or capacity in a church and but you know I walked out of um, direct sales um, a few years ago and it was a really hard decision for me and I'm so grateful for Debbie because she's been a grandma watched my children while I was in corporate ministry helped me run kids all over we always say it does take a village yes. while I was um, operating and building a direct sales company and organization and being faithful to God in that but you know I stepped out of that a few years ago and that meant a change of income for my family that meant I didn't know where I was going I didn't have another opportunity I wasn't going into another position but I had to step out like Abraham and that was scary for me and um, the last few years that I've operated really as a full-time mom have been so fulfilling to me because I have been able to really get down in the dirt with my kids and walk out the hard stuff with them things that a lot of people will never be willing to do. They send their kids to a youth pastor, or they send their kids to a pastor, and we're grateful for all of them. But I learned a long time ago that the light that shines the furthest shines the brightest at home. And so I just wanted to honor and spotlight you today because, I mean, you're one of the greatest you know, prophets, intercessors, <laughs> pastors, evangelists, apostles that I know. And I know that you would say, don't give me that yep, title no, unless yeah. I'm commissioned by a pastor. But I love it because God, God gives us gifts for every and callings and uh, opportunities for every seasons that we're in. But really, I'm saying that to say you, it comes down to us knowing Jesus and being a Christian. That's what it is. And every single one of us is called to be a little Christ like one. And um, I'm just so grateful that you have always empowered your kids to become the fullest that God has called them to be. And, and we're still doing that. You know, yes. you still have a couple at home. Mine are right. You know, it's so cool because um, my oldest and his youngest two um, uncles, they're like best friends. And we're yeah, equipping them together as a family. Brothers. And, and you know, we think about in the biblical times, there was no church, there was the temple, yeah. but only few people were allowed in the temple anyway, the, the actual, you know, um, anointed ones. And, and I just think so many, so many people that we see that have been impacted in Bible days, there, there was, it was just the family. You go, you go as tribes and you really have a revelation of that. And so I just wanted you to kind of share what that looks like for us. <laughs> encourage moms, encourage dads. We have single dads that watch. We have single moms. We have every dynamic of blended yeah. families. And, you know, um, mm -hmm. I, I want to say this one more thing before I turn it over is, you know, I come from a family where we're blended. I have parents that have been married multiple times. I'm an only child from my mom and my dad, but I have step, step in half. And one of the process of my life that has been healing and wholeness and restoration was I married into a family you know, where you guys have been married how many years this year? 42. 42, 42 years, years this year. And I've learned, um, you know, that God can restore and make all of those situations whole, even blended families that God can bring restoration and you can get along and you can still raise kids. And then just the God's real desire for, um, you know, sticking it out in the yeah. tough times. And I know in my own marriage, that's been an encouragement to me because that's not my bloodline. That's not mm -hmm. what happened in the fam in my family, you know? And so I just appreciate you so much. So wherever the Holy Spirit leads you, I'd love for you just to share well, and of, encourage us. First of all, I just wanted to say that both my husband and I, uh, we come from broken families. Yeah. Uh, my my uh, parents divorced and uh, his parents divorced. And um, even though my mother never remarried, uh, my dad did. 
and uh, his dad remarried a couple times after that, you know, and so um, for, for him, you know, having a blended family, he's kind of like you. He, he had other siblings too, you know. Yeah. Um, and, but I just want to say in all of that dynamic, we decided, uh, because we met each other, um, you know, <laughs> we met each other early in life, you know, uh, in a youth group at, at our church. And so, um, and then we went to high school together as well. And after we had uh, gotten married and everything, we decided we wanted to raise our children uh, in a godly way. And we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't. We didn't <laughs> I'm know so grateful what you we shared did. that because you know, it's reality. We didn't know. I mean, we were saved. Don't get me wrong. We were saved and we love God and we were filled with Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues, but we didn't have any education as what was what God's will was for the family. And so what we did was uh, we decided that we were going to raise our family differently. So we read books. Thank God for Dr. Dobson. Yeah. You know, thank God for, you know, um, Family Life Today with Dennis Rainey. Thank God for all the different ministries that came into our life to help us to to know what God's will was to to raise a family and of course we read the word but there were so many dynamics and you know because there are different stages when you have children you know and with us being that we had nine we had the teenager the middle school the look i remember school, one the time baby, five, the toddler five, i mean we had them all at one time yeah. five teenagers at the house i remember yes, at one time i'm like time. oh my gosh we were like oh god help us yeah. you know and uh but you know there god provides for what he gives you so yeah, first of all, you so know, a, a lot of people would say, well, why, why did you have so many kids? You know, that's kind of like, you know, kind of odd. Why would you want that many? Well, because early on in our, our life, you know, we've had our two, uh, our first two, and we decided, well, we weren't going to have any more. And then Bill Gothard came into our life. Okay, we went to the Bill Gother seminar. We were learning about family. We were learning about, you know, uh, surrendering everything to God and, and submitting uh, how many children that you should have to the Lord. Yeah. And so we decided, oh, okay, we, well, I think we want some more children, you know. So the, the, the first two and then the last seven <laughs> were, were a result of Lord, um, do you want us to have another child after, after we had, you know, uh, a baby, you know, and so we we would my husband and I would pray, and we you know, and by the time the last one came, we're thinking, uh, you know, we're we're probably uh, you know before uh, I guess number eight, yeah, as number eight came, and then before number nine, we were thinking, oh, we're done, we're done, <laughs> and uh, then the Lord then the Lord spoke to both my husband and I and said, no, there's one more, wow, one more, so I would just encourage you, it's not that. Uh, God doesn't give you the desires. I, I didn't start out, you know, wanting 10 kids. My husband wanted, you know, uh, 10 kids. We had nine, you know, I've, I've, I've got two in heaven. But the, the, the deal is, is this, it's the surrender. God, what is your will to be done in my life and yeah. not my own? And so with that being said, um, uh, getting the information that we got from uh, the different uh, ministries and yeah. also our pastor and, and having family seminars and different things, and we learned so much of what we didn't know. And we didn't want to go into the same cycle or have it that our families, we wanted to break that generational um, trend yeah. off of th our children so that they wouldn't have to go through the pain and heartache that my husband and I went through. So best we could, we did uh, uh, as much as the Lord, um, you know, uh, brought our way to obey what he said to do. So one of the things I did was, you know, Rigel always knows, and he, he quotes this, he was just, <laughs> is that, you know, your life is not your own, it's bought with a price. Right, which, that's my okay. husband, and one thing, I just have to get a giggle because I hear him say that to our kids all the time. You know, their youngest is 19, our yeah. oldest is 16. And I always hear him remind my son, yeah. your life is not, not your own. own. It was you bought with the, the price. price. That's right. Yeah. So somebody did it for you, you know, and especially Jesus. He yeah. laid down his life for you. And yeah. so we need to submit and lay our life down for him and be obedient and willing, willing to be obedient to him. So that's one of the things that our, you know, that we always told our kids because, you know, they're not always willing. I mean, of course. <laughs> they're not always willing, you know, to do, but that's what we did. And so, uh, in, in all that, we would have devotions. We would, um, 
you know, do the best we could with the issues that happened and try, try to, you know, Matthew 7, 12, but they all probably know it, you know, do unto others as you'd have them do to you. <laughs> you know, that's a, like a basic thing, right. you know, uh, and then that's across the world, not just for kids, that's for adults, adults too. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Adults too, you know, and so they know that very well, but we just always try to, you know, especially with emotions that flare, you know, that everybody's going through different phases of life with uh, different hormone changes and everything. Yeah. And you know, so we need to have grace with one another. And the biggest thing I think that um, that we learn to teach our kids is forgiveness. I love it. Is to forgive us. Forgiveness is a great key uh, for freedom. And uh, if you want freedom for the things that happen to you in life, you know, because tragedy happens to good people. Yeah, yeah. They do. Tragedy happens to every family, you know, because there's a real devil out there and he hates us. And so he's going to come and he's going to try to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you want freedom, you need to forgive. Um, uh, I think it's Matthew chapter 6 where the Lord's Prayer is. Right after that, the yeah. next very verse after that, it says that you need to forgive so that your Heavenly Father will forgive you. Because we're not perfect. Nobody's right. perfect in right. this world. And because of that, we need to do for others what Christ did for us. Yeah. And that is forgive and forget our sin as far as the east is from the west. Now, as a human, we, we you know, in teaching children to forgive and to forget is, is just training. It's just consistent, persistent uh, repetition with children, yeah. training them to forgive. And as they get become adults then, then they can apply those principles because there are different phases of, um, you know, development for children. And so they have to be reminded. Yeah. They have to be trained, you know. So anyway, and in saying all that, you, you get some that when they grow up, they uh, will we return. I mean, there's a, uh, to what they've been taught, but some of them go on the wayside. And uh, they, they become prodigals. And so the Lord gave me a strategy. He gave me some scriptures on how to pray for prodigals. And so um, anyway, I began to pray because I had some in, my, in our family. And so uh, as I began to pray and pour out my heart, you know, I had to get myself and my pain out of the way first. Right. Because in order to pray for them effectively, I couldn't pray what I willed. I, I couldn't pray my pain. I couldn't pray... Um, what I wanted them to be, and my ideas and my dreams for their life. Because a lot of times as parents, we have dreams and goals well, for them. Well, and I think too, you, um, you know, the reality is you spent your whole life sacrificing for them, yes, that they yes. will become who God has called them to be. And so it's only not, you know, it, it, it's a wide open opportunity for the enemy to come in and say, you know, you, this is your fault or they should be doing this. And it's the struggle is real when it comes to parenthood it just yeah. is you know it is you know because well maybe you shouldn't have done this or maybe you shouldn't right. have done that you know all these different things but i always say in uh standing in faith when you've done all to stand you stand right but you need to to uh remove doubt and fear out yes. of your life so and good. the way that i did that was always saying god is good and god is working yeah and that dispels the doubt and fear knowing that god is good and God that is God is working in their life. Now, can I see it with my physical eye? No, not all the time. But, you know, we wait on the Lord. I just feel like in a lot of times uh, in our life when we uh, want to get in a hurry, then we trip and we fall and we make mistakes. But when we wait on the Lord and do Luke 18, we expect him to move. We, we, uh, we know that he hears our prayers. And that as we praise and we worship him and we're expecting good to happen and that knowing and saying God is working, then that is giving faith and power to what you're believing so that you'll see those things come to pass that God promised in the word because you're, you're, you're keeping your eyes and focus in the right place. And that's on the word of God and on the Lord working instead of us doing something yeah. that might be stepping out in faith, we think, but it could be a oh, wrong thing, right. you know, a mistake. I've done that myself. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I wish I could have just took that away. You know, that was like guilt and condemnation when yeah. I really meant it to be, right. you know. Uh, it wasn't your heart. Yeah, it wasn't it was my said. heart. Yeah. yeah. So my heart was always to do God's will and to be close to the Lord so that I would know exactly what he was saying in that circumstance, you know. So praying uh, praying for prodigals is what the Lord gave me. Uh, Isaiah 49, 25 is my favorite scripture because when I was going through the pain of uh, praying in um, my, uh, my family, um, he gave me uh, 
uh, that scripture. And it's, uh, let me just repeat it one more time. I think I said it in the last segment. But it's, but thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contends with you, and I will save your children. And so I, I stood on that. But also, I stood on Psalms 86, 16. It says, oh, turn to me and have mercy on me. Give strength to your servant, because I needed strength at that yeah. time. And save the sons of your maidservant. And then Proverbs 11, 21 B says, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered, shall be delivered. And I, I was standing on these promises. And the only, the only thing, too, that really um, uh, caused me to feel the love of God is his word. And Psalms 116, uh, 1 through 2, it says, I love the Lord. And I do. I love you, Jesus. Right. Because he has heard my voice. And he's heard my supplications because he's inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. Yeah, that's so good. It's so anointed. It's so anointed to, uh, to quote God's word and to stand on God's yeah. word because Jesus is the word, right? Yeah. And he watches over his word to perform it. His word doesn't come back void. And so anyway, I just kept saying, here I am, Lord, Luke 18. I'm back here just like the widow. <laughs> You know, I'm expecting, I'm believing, I'm, I'm knowing that you love me and that you want to answer my prayers in this. And so, anyway, I don't know if we have time yeah, to go, go over ahead. some of this. If we, if right, we run out, I'll close this down and we'll go in the next session. Okay, um, then let this me go ahead so and, and uh, encourage you to know that your children, the ones that you're praying for, or it could be a friend or uh, uh, a spouse, that Philippians 1, 6 is, uh, 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you or in them will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So that just kind of confirms uh, my uh, my statement of saying God is good and God is working. Because yeah. this, this this is the scripture that that can say that God is working in your in your um, person's life that you're believing for. And sometimes, you know, I know the reality is sometimes that's all you have to say. See. That's all that you can muster up. God is good. God is working. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's, it's, it's true right. because circumstances may dictate otherwise. Right. But um, I would be, I would begin praying uh, Philippians one nine through eleven, and God wants us to pray His word. I just want to reiterate that yeah. uh, because His word is powerful. Okay, yeah. above our words, it's powerful. But if, when we got His word in our mouth, then things happen. But when we got our own words in our mouth, things don't happen. Right. Okay, so we pray that pray that they will grow in love and abound in love. Number two, make make sure uh, make them cause cause them to make wise choices and discern what is best. Because a lot of times, and this is what day, you're praying over that. That's why I'm praying yeah. over them. Because in this day and age, truth is very skewed. You know, so I always pray that they know truth from a lie. Yeah. It's really important because we know God's word is truth, okay? And there's a lot of lies going out out there. A lot there. of confusion. So, right. So one, grow in, uh, that they grow and abound in love. Two, that they make wise choices and discern what is best. And three, that they live with integrity without offense, being pure and blameless. I pray, number four, that they become like Jesus, like Christ, filled with the fruits of, this, of righteousness. And number five, I pray that they will live for God's glory. And then in Galatians 5, it says... And I pray these over them. I just pray. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Lord, I pray that they walk in love. Yeah. I pray that they walk yes. in joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Because the opposite is happening. Right. You know, there's a lot of things that people are saying about them that they've done that, you know, that uh, are not uh, uh, positive. That, so we cast down those uh, those things that are being said against them, and we pray what God's will is for yes. them. And then even in Proverbs, it says, uh, uh, Proverbs twenty two fifteen. although rebellion is woven into a, a young man's heart, tough discipline can make him into a man. Now, I would think, you know, sometimes we think, well, discipline uh, can be, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, corporal punishment or being thrown in jail or, or whatever. Okay, but I think the discipline the Lord is, is saying here is the Lord's discipline. Mm. There is conviction of sin yes. there. Okay. There's, that's part of the Lord's, uh, you know, discipline, conviction of sin. Also, um, them just knowing that, uh, you know, God is for them and not against them, you know. Part of that discipline is the love walk yeah. that God, you know, it says in Romans 2 that, 
uh, it's the uh, the love of the Lord that turns man into yeah. you know to repentance, you know. And so anyway, and then uh, there's a few more things. I'm not sure we have time to go through this, but I called on the Lord, and I and I would say, God. Uh, I pray that they will come to their wits end with their lifestyle. I pray hedge of thorns around about them and in their relationships. That their relationships, Father God, if they're not from you, Lord, that they would just die off, you know? And I would pray Acts 26. Lord, open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in Jesus. And I would pray 2 Corinthians 4, 3. But Lord, even our gospel is veiled. It is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds of the God of this age has been blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So what I would do is I would bind lying spirits off of them, and I would lose salvation. Mm, okay. So good. Yeah. 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 You can go ahead and read the okay. light. All right. And in Romans, I would pray Romans 2, 4. Uh, do uh, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, the forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of the Lord leads man to repentance, I, which I was just quoting that yeah. while ago. Pray that, and so I would pray that the eyes of their mind would see the goodness of the Lord, because there's so many uh, things that that cause them to feel um, lost and intimidated and justified in what they're doing, and also. Um, I just think that they just don't know the unconditional love of God. Because when we know the unconditional yeah. love of God, it's an overwhelming thing that God brings into our life to, so that we would know that he's for us and not against us. Right. So I pray that the prodigals would have an uh, impartation from God. And it says in Isaiah 29, 24, and I'll end with this one. And is pray it, of that too. Okay. Uh, these also who have erred in doctrine will come to understanding, and those who complain will learn doctrine. So, Father, I just pray Jesus. right now over those who have prodigals, those who have spouses, those who have uh, loved ones, Lord, that are, um, that are in the world. I ask, Lord God, that you would just Jesus. go before them, that right you would now, make Lord, the crooked way, uh, places straight, the rough places smooth, that you would give them encouragement, that you would give them courage, Lord, that you would help them to pray. Holy Spirit, I yes. ask for your help in their life, Lord, that you, would you help them pray, Lord? Would you give them scriptures for them to stand on, Lord, uh, to, for their loved ones? Because I know that you are faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for meeting all this needs in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>